Thank you. There's a pain that affects millions, billions of people around the world. It causes heads to hurt. Some people say they're allergic to it. It affects them for over a decade of their lives. It's math. <laughs> Such an epidemic surely needs a doctor. I'm afraid I'm not a real doctor, but I can doctor some math. I'm a math professor here at Carnegie Mellon University. A few years ago, when I became the national coach of the United States International Math Olympiad team, it inspired me to think about what I could do to try to help everyone with the way they approach and learn math on a national and international scale. There was only one problem. One is the loneliest number, as they say, and one person cannot possibly have the diversity of thought, diversity of skills to achieve this. And so I founded the social enterprise, XP, to help me achieve these goals. Around this time, I really started to think about what might be behind people's thinking about mathematics, and also what we could do to try to help everyone learn math. I attended a conference at Oxford University, and I remember this very distinctly, that at the end of the first day, when we were all talking about different ways that we could run national programs to help more people learn math, it suddenly occurred to me, you know, how much money are we spending as a public society from the government and education departments to teach people how to do math. We're spending a lot, actually. But how much money are we spending as a government to teach people how to play basketball? But how come people can still play basketball or any of your other favorite sports? Actually, maybe we should start asking the question of why people do what they do, because actually, Here's another interesting stat. How much money is spent to try to convince people to play basketball, whether through advertisements or media? Have you ever seen an advertisement for math? <laughs> ah. So maybe, maybe, we actually need to ask the question of why, but not the usual kind of question of why is this good for you? I mean, when was the last time you remember seeing an advertisement for your favorite soda telling you you should drink it because of how nutritious it is? <laughs> Actually, usually you see somebody that you might want to be like taking a drink and being happy. You see, human motivation starts even below the conscious. So maybe if we want to move the needle on math, we need to be bold and take a page from entertainment. Dude, that's a bus. Is that the bus? I know he's not going to make it. I promise you, this is actually a math video. <laughs> now, I'm going to cut ahead to a part in the middle where you can see how the math and real life intersect. And since the street and the alleyway create a right triangle, I can use the Pythagorean theorem to beat the bus. I know there are four spaces between the telephone poles on the street the bus is currently on, and the street the bus and I were just on has three spaces. So actually, maybe the secret, if you're trying to build something that will help teenagers, maybe teenagers should be a key component of that design and that conversation. That's the secret here. Maybe let me jump to the end, just so you can see how this works. Yes, there is a math lesson in between. We're jumping over it right now. <laughs> and if I add them together, it makes 25. And the square root of 25 is 5.
All right. How did you get here so fast? Pythagorean theorem, man. I gotta learn that. <laughs> so, collaboration, by the way, is a beautiful thing. Remember I said one person can't possibly do what is needed to move the needle. Credits to Christian Brown for his crazy parkour skills, <laughs> and Gage Grisalka, and also the Steel Town, Steel Town's teen film crew, which were all behind this particular production. In fact, what you've just seen here is a preview in some sense. It's the first of a series of math, real life, and entertainment that we're producing. We're working actually with a variety of different partners in the film and entertainment space. So that hits the first part of the why, which is the subconscious. The good thing though, is that actually this is worth it. Math actually is useful. <laughs> so there's the next level, and let's start talking into the conscious, because I also want to share that we're not just doing math because it makes us feel good. Actually, math can give you a sense, a sixth sense, so to speak. And I like to give this example to show. Uh, this will be relevant to you in your life the next time that you may be facing a beverage served in a cone-shaped cup. I just want to do a quick quiz of the audience. Just, this is not a math quiz. This is an intuition quiz. Which one of these is half full? in terms of half full of the volume. Who thinks it's the first one? Who thinks it's the second one? Third one? Fourth one? And indeed, the majority of the audience agrees with what I thought too, which is I thought the answer was the third one. And it's wrong. Actually, there was about one or two hands that went for the fourth option. Believe it or not, if you're looking at that fourth option, that is actually half full by volume. This is an example of how human intuition is actually chronically wrong across seven billion people. <laughs> now, most people don't believe that that could possibly be half. The good thing is that math gives you a framework to go from something you don't believe to something that you might believe. And the idea is that when you think about volume, if you start shrinking the dimension of an object on all three dimensions, the volume of the object changes by the product of how much you change on each direction. If you half it this way, half it this way, and half it this way, you just one-eighth the whole thing. And so actually 80%, 0.8 times 0.8 times 0.8, that's 0.512. That's about 50%. To me, as somebody who loves math, I feel that if you start to use this aspect of math, then you can see the whole world with some sort of heightened sensitivity. You see patterns. You understand. And that's one of the most pleasurable feelings, actually, to understand what's going on around you and to be able to change everything. Well, but uh, it wouldn't be very nice for me just to do a tease and say, oh, this is all great stuff, but you know, as everyone knows, um, People are born either able to do math or not. Let me debunk that right now. I don't think that's true. Actually, there are certain aspects to math that if you learn it the right way, actually everyone on Earth could actually do math and have this sixth sense. You see, the best analogy I would give is this. I'm going to put something on the board. I will give you two seconds. It's a pattern of lines on a dark background. Memorize as much of it as you can in two seconds. Are you ready? One, two. Okay, so now most of you probably can memorize a part of it instantly. And for most of you, there are parts of it that if you had 20 seconds, you wouldn't be able to have memorized. And what I'm referring to here is a, con is a notion of concepts and structure. A lot of times when we learn math, we're used to thinking of trying to memorize as many pieces as possible. I will say, if I'm trying to memorize this just by the little marks on the screen, I will also fail miserably. But at the same time, the fact that many of you have different parts of it that you immediately recognize, just show the power you have when you understand concepts. And so actually, pulling back to the basketball analogy, one other reason why so many people can play basketball is because of accessibility. It's not just a tease saying basketball is fun, but good luck. You won't find a hoop anywhere. 
there's a hoop in every neighborhood. So clearly what we need to do is to do the same for math. But won't that cost another billion dollars to put the equivalent in front of everyone? Well, we are at a unique moment in human history, very unique moment, where it doesn't cost another billion dollars. Because there is a portal through which everyone can access, which might be in your pocket right now. In fact, there are now two billion smartphones in the world. And this opens up another way to let everyone learn math through maybe what should be the best possible ways, which are one-on-one. -on -one. Because actually, I can even give an analysis of why math is so hard to learn. Every subject has concepts. I claim math has less concepts to learn than history. But there's one fundamental difference. If you look at how the concepts of math are arranged, the quadratic formula needs square roots. It also needs fractions, needs addition, subtraction. There are very, very long chains of dependencies, links between the concepts. Whereas, say, in history, it is not quite so linear. And so, if you might have happened to get sick for a week, or had something else on your mind in middle school when you were, anyway, translationing uh, into adolescence and adulthood, and missed some things, missed some links, then you might suddenly wonder why things aren't making sense. Honestly, it's just because some of the links in the middle are missing. But then that gives a recipe to try to fix this. If only we could find a way to identify everybody's missing links and patch them one at a time, then everything would make sense. I mean, personally, I'll share, I liked math because, for me, I couldn't remember anything, and so it was the easiest subject. <laughs> you just had to know how to problem-solve your way from link to link. And the beauty with computers, the fact that everyone has access to a smartphone, and the fact that the computer servers that you build can process a billion calculations a second, which, by the way, is doing math as fast as the entire world working together at the same time. The fact that these have all converged at the same time makes a way that we could actually give that access to every single person. I've just described a strategy in abstract. Of course, it's great that there are lots of different groups all trying to achieve through this strategy. With what we do, actually, we decided that we even wanted to combine that with something else. Going back to that diversity, going back to that idea that there are different things that move you. Maybe there should even be different ways to learn every lesson. How about that? If we work together on this, all of the different education organizations in the world, we will achieve everybody being able to do math. But now there's a deepest, deepest why. Why in the world should we even bother doing this? And I'll share what is really a strong motivation for why I get up every day to work on this project. Because actually, thinking is what makes us human. Math, the way we are advocating, is actually the art of thinking and reasoning. We want to build a more thoughtful world. Thank you.